Hello and welcome to the Suzanne Atwell Show. I'm Suzanne Atwell. We are very proud to say this is the beginning of our third season. And to mark the occasion, we celebrate a half century of performing arts in Sarasota. The 50th anniversary of the Van Wezel. Our story begins with three legendary names in Sarasota history. An immigrant philanthropist, a visionary public administrator, and a musical prodigy. Louis Van Wezel was born in Amsterdam and immigrated to the United States where he worked in the family diamond business, becoming a successful buyer for Tiffany's in New York. He and his wife Eugenia, a Russian immigrant, moved to Sarasota in 1934. Prior to their deaths, they established a foundation which contributed over $400,000 for construction of the hall that bears their name. Ken Thompson is recognized as the most important city manager in Sarasota history. Between 1950 and 1988, he oversaw the transformation of Sarasota from a sleepy resort village to the modern city it is today. During his 38 years at the helm, downtown and the Bayfront developments included the current City Hall, Island Park, Marina Jack, and the Van Wezel. An amateur juggler, captured in this rare photograph at the Van Wezel, Thompson joked he was the first to perform at the famous hall. The third star in the Van Wezel legacy is David Cohen. A musical prodigy, Cohen moved to Sarasota from Petoskey, Michigan in the 1940s. He co-founded the Florida West Coast Symphony, where he performed as first violin and concertmaster. Cohen was also a city commissioner and Sarasota's first Jewish mayor. Ground was broken on April 25, 1968. As Sarasota historian Jeff LaHerd reported in the Sarasota Herald Tribune, the unusual building on the bay was scoffed at by some as the Purple People's Cedar or the Purple Cow. It was designed by William Wesley Peters, a protege and son-in-law of the world-famous architect Frank Lloyd Wright. A serrated, lavender-colored seashell found by Mrs. Frank Lloyd Wright is the inspiration for the shape and color of the hall. The shell is on display in the lobby. The hall opened on January 5, 1970, with a sold-out production of Fiddler on the Roof, the classic Broadway musical about the life and struggles of a Jewish family in Imperial Russia. Some Sarasota old-timers say the choice was a tribute to the genius, generosity, and Jewish heritage of David Cohen and the Van Wezels. As we mark the 50th anniversary of the Van Wezel, our city is once again in the midst of a development and building renaissance. The city-owned venue and bayfront property it sits on are a key part of plans for a world-class waterfront park. As of this moment, the future of the Van Wezel is uncertain. Drawings for a new larger performance hall were recently presented to the city. To learn more about that and the star-studded history of the Van Wezel, we turn to the executive director, Mary Benzel. Well, I think it's really needed because um, the Van Wezel, when it was built, it was state of the art for the day. Sure. But the theater these days is about experiential, you know, coming and having, being able to see all sorts of things, um, you know, having dinner outside and, and having performances out on the lawn. And the physical plan of the Van Wezel has really got some issues. Mm -hmm. um, there is no insulation in the roof, so when it gets too hot, it really is very hard to uh, cool this down or, or vice mm -hmm. versa. And um, in fact, we're looking at possibly a new roof. You also mm -hmm. have the issue um, of the chillers and we don't have enough bathrooms and mm -hmm. the lobby space is very limited, but mm -hmm. we sit right on the bay. I mean, mm -hmm. our orchestra pit is under sea level. Sure. And so yeah. when you're looking at the future coming along, you, you know, we're going to have the ocean coming in here. So mm -hmm. it's mm -hmm. not the bay, I should say. And so that, that is very important. And we really need better spaces for our education programs. 
Um, we have a really robust education program Absolutely. here. We have mm -hmm. 30,000 students come right. every year. Mm -hmm. And we don't have any classrooms, and, and we don't have the right number of spaces. So it's really important that we look now to the future. Mm -hmm. And when I came here, we renovated. Um, I've spent about $10 million over the 12 years I've been here. We put a new patio outside. Yeah. Yes all new mm -hmm. seats, a new sound system. Mm -hmm. But you can only renovate, up, uh, uh, because of where we're located, FEMA sure. will only let us um, renovate up to the tune of 50% the market value. Right. The market value on the Van Wezel is 30 million. So you can only renovate to the tune of, tep of, of $15 million. Mm -hmm. So you can't make all these big improvements that you'd like to. We just finished doing a pork share and sure. that was Beautiful. that was harmed during the hurricane mm -hmm. and it we were only able to re, um, fix it because replacing it would have been over a million dollars so you know it's it's got a lot of issues she's been a wonderful wonderful performing arts center but it's time for the future it's time for change so how would it, it's time for that change for the physical part of it how would it change if it would your job it would change because i'll tell you it's very hard to book shows because of the number of seats we have we only mm -hmm. have 1741 yeah. seats and for example up in the stras they have 2600 seats so when they have to decide when a producer decides whether they're going to come to the van wazel or they're going to go to the stras the issue is they can make so much more money yeah. in in with the bigger seat capacity mm -hmm. you really in these days to support a show like the lion king that had mm -hmm. 18 trucks of scenery you need at least 2000 seats and mm -hmm. we're planning on t like i believe 2250 in the mm -hmm. new hall so you need to get that seat count up because otherwise what happens is i get blocked on presenting a lot of shows and it, sure. it's just lucky that i have a lot of friends in the business that i've been able to call on to bring you know a josh groban here or something mm -hmm. like that because our ca our capacity limits us on these big shows absolutely so it would you have great programming but this would change programming it oh would, absolutely it would give you more opportunity absolutely mm -hmm. and and i mean as it is we are 60 miles from the stras sure it really is is far enough away and um this would really help us with bringing an evan hansen or a lion king i mean it was 15 years before the lion king came here mm. you know i'd like to have these shows when they're current and sure. so that mm -hmm. would also make it easier. You know, when we have a gala performance and, mm -hmm. you know, you have an artist, people don't have any idea what artist fees can be these days. Sure. And, you know, I mean, when I'm looking for a gala artist fee, you know, sometimes I, the highest I can go is about $250,000 to the artist. And these major artists are looking for five and seven hundred thousand sure. dollars, and it just isn't economical in this size venue. So how will that work when you, uh, let's look at the, uh, the bay. Mm -hmm. How does the Van Wezel, the, the Performing Arts Hall, uh, work into that? Well, what I does think, that mean? I think it's going to be wonderful for the, it, it will be the centerpiece of the park. Mm. And this new theater, the pr a proposition is that it'll be on stilts. So if there is the w sea rise, it can go and there will be able to have 200 cars parked under there. People should realize there will certainly be more parking. That's not mm -hmm. just the only parking. But I think um, w with having the Performing Arts Hall and a performance lawn mm -hmm. uh, that can sit three, four thousand right. people, you will keep this park very active because, mm -hmm. you know, um, when you talk to A.G. Laffley, he talks about yoga at this time and, mm -hmm. you know, I want to have a yeah. Christmas market here right. and all sorts of activities that we could be doing that would be excellent. And I think we will be very complimentary because, remember, we are in the arts <laughs> district. So, mm -hmm. so, and the other thing is it will help with safety and vagrancy because, mm -hmm. you know, when you have an active venue and it's not sitting here just all by itself, the park just, you know, with, with not, you know, another building mm -hmm. here, it certainly um, will help in those regards. So well, I think this is one of our biggest legacies, that whole area there. And I think a lot of uh, the community, many, many uh, meetings mm -hmm. they had with all this, that it's accessible. Oh, yeah. Sometimes walkable for people that can walk and ride bikes. It's a bikes. great wedding venue. Mm -hmm. It's a great quinceanera venue. Right. Um, and I, I want to, you know, I, hopefully there'll be some restaurants on the mm -hmm. park mm -hmm. that where people can sit and have, you know, a meal and look at this bay. And, you know, for me, it's so hard. I drive in in the morning and I see that gorgeous bay. Right. And then I go in my office. And, of course, my office faces the parking lot. Right. I only wish it was the other way around. <laughs> right. And then I see the bay when I leave. And sure. I watch people walking out there. Mm -hmm. And my favorite time of year at the Van Wezel is April where it's mm. it's cool enough you know not so uh, so hot mm -hmm. and you sit out there and have a glass of wine before right. the show and have right. dinner here and it's just 
It's a special evening, and I think that will continue with the new hall because they'll have some great views. Right. Another thing, um, you you came from Barbara Mann mm -hmm. in the Fort Myers Naples area yep. before you uh, took the helm of the Van Wezel. How is it different? Um, coming from that environment to here? Because people may think that you've been in government operations forever. Yeah, I never worked in government. <laughs> and this was quite the shocker for me. You know, I think you were a commissioner mm -hmm. when I was yes. uh, coming in. And all the rules that we don't have in, because uh, uh, with the Barber Man, it is owned by Edison College, but it's operated by professional facility management. Mm -hmm. And they operate about 15 venues across the US. And so I worked for, you know, professional theater people. And the difference is, you know, um, you don't have the same rules. You know, you came here and you have all this open records, public records mm -hmm. laws. Mm -hmm. You know, um, when I got here, you know, it really threw me off. It mm -hmm. certainly is very hard when you're buying something. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I had some of the people from the uh, city here said, well, how did you buy things before if you, I said, we just bought them. Mm -hmm. You know, you mm -hmm. didn't go through this elaborate bid sure. system and, and so forth. And it's it was hard for me in the beginning. Mm -hmm. It really was. And I felt like when I came to town, the people that worked at the city didn't really, you know, didn't really uh, relate to me because they were in government. Right. And then the people in the arts felt I was government. And exactly. I'm, and it, exactly. so it was, but I've had to find my footing. And I must say, I've fallen in love with Sarasota. Mm -hmm. and, and it's just, uh, it's a wonderful home for me. Well, and you get into this is true. You're the epitome here now of a public private. Yes, yes. And, and it almost has to be with our community that we have, but you are owned by the city right and how we work together and that do you feel that this is the future in a lot of these venues I think public it is. private uh, you know and that is the standard model like that's the way the barbara mann hall was that's now when i worked in philadelphia um at one point it was very similar a college owned one of the theaters i worked for the schubert theater mm -hmm. and the college owned that one and we were a professional management company that ran it um, I worked at the Walnut Street Theater, where they actually owned the board of directors, owned the facility, you know, mm -hmm. and so they're all different models, but I really do think having something managed by professionals who do that for a living is really important. Mm -hmm. And that's what happened with Barbara Manhall that you mentioned, is that the college was trying to run it, but it wasn't, it was bleeding red ink, and it wasn't getting the kinds of shows, and when they brought in PFM, um, you know, that made a huge difference. I also worked at a road company that produced Broadway shows. So I got to see the other side, the touring business. Mm -hmm. So I really feel I have a good grasp on it all. You've got both sides because you've got, you are government here, but you've got the benefit of an extraordinary, valuable, philanthropic arts community. Yes, and that, we have, that is part of we this. have a wonderful partnership with the yes. Van Wezel Foundation, sure. and they're the ones that are developing the new um, SPAC, as, as we're calling the Sarasota Performing Arts Center. And um, they have a new director, Cheryl Mendelson, um, mm. is the president and CEO there, and Jim Travers has taken over as the board chairman. And they really are so enthusiastic, and they've brought great new people onto the board mm -hmm. that really have skills that um, can great. speak to uh, you know financing this and right. how is the tip going to work and and then of course we're trying to work with the city with the county with the mm -hmm. state right well a lot of people do question that um, as financing but that that will come because there'll be multiple levels of that it'll be private it's and huge, public of course yeah you know and Absolutely. I think that's so important and I think what a great synergy that makes. Mm -hmm. And the nice part of the, the city part is they will look out for everybody in exactly. the community mm -hmm. where um, you know the private part will have some flexibility that I don't have mm -hmm. you know, on, on how to run a, a facility. And it's, it's been a challenge. Mm -hmm. um, you know, and, and I was really thrilled that we were able to turn this venue around when I got here. It, it took a lot, but we did. And mm -hmm. I'm so proud of the programming. Well, I tell you, 50 years, hopefully 50 more more years. Yes. This is exciting. You've done an amazing job. It's it's what an asset we we have with Van Ways. Oh, I'm so thrilled to be here. I'm really it's really wonderful to come to work. Our community is grateful for the incredible work Mary has done, the world class artist she has brought to town, and the extraordinary administrative leadership she has provided. One of the few, maybe the only person to have seen as many performances at the Van Wazel as Mary has, Jay Handelman, theater critic for the Sarasota Herald Tribune since 1986. The Van Wazel has provided me a lot of uh, opportunities to 
interview people, to meet people. I got to meet Carol Channing mm -hmm. uh, in person. I spent three hours with her in Punta Gorda uh, when she was performing down there a few weeks before she was coming here. And I had dinner with her and got her whole life story, mm -hmm. uh, which was you know magical. Mm -hmm. uh, I got to interview Liza Minnelli. I've interviewed Patti Lapone and Audra McDonald, who probably gave one of my favorite um, performances here. I think that the best interview I ever got to do because of the Van Wazel was with Dame Edna Everidge, uh, the Australian actress. Barry Humphreys is the actor who plays Dame Edna. And uh, unbeknownst to me, on, before I had the interview, uh, Barry Humphreys' people had been in touch with my editor and asked a lot of questions about me. Mm -hmm. So while we were talking, I was interviewed, and throughout his career, her career, you either interviewed Barry Humphreys or you interviewed Dame Edna. You didn't do both because it was, you know, she, she was playing Dame Edna. Right. So I interviewed Dame Edna, and she was consoling me about something sad that had happened, and she was telling me about some opportunities that had happened to me. I, I became chairman of the Theater Critics Association, and she was talking about that. I'm like, I'm, and my editor is sitting next to me laughing because she was listening to my interview. She turned it and I couldn't type, I, I, I typed my interviews on the computer. I could not function. It was, <laughs> you know, it was hard to write my story because I didn't have any notes because I was laughing so hard. So yeah. that was one of my, my favorite mm -hmm. experiences. So what do you think the impact that the Van Wazel, 50 years and counting, um, has on the entire community over the years? Well, I think that uh, you, you think about the long list of people who have been here, from Beverly Sills and Leontine Price, uh, Luciano Pavarotti, a lot of these people were there before my time, Red Skelton, Milton mm -hmm. Berle, mm -hmm. uh, Phyllis Stiller, mm -hmm. maybe not up in the same list with Beverly Sills, but um, I mean, the Van Wazel has brought incredible talent to Sarasota that might not have been here because there wasn't a venue to right. house them. Do you think the Van Wazel, with all that's going on and possibly a performing arts center, will change who attends? The, the opportunity for having something bigger and that can pr build on what the Van Wazel started sure. um, is, is great because the community has to grow. And I, I, I think it's an important thing for the community to have something bigger and better mm -hmm. uh, and hopefully reflecting a little bit of what we've had in the past. Like Jay, I too have many fond memories of the Van Wazel. One of my all-time best was back in February of 2017. Here I am backstage with Martin Short and Steve Martin. It was a fantastic show, and I will never forget going backstage and meeting two of my all-time favorite comedians. When it comes to the performing arts in our community, few know more about the impact the Van Wazel has made than Sarasota Arts and Cultural Alliance Executive Director Jim Shirley. Well, Sarasota has been built on the arts as a community. And you know, a lot of that goes back historically, obviously, to John Ringling and the circus, mm -hmm. and then all of the visual artists that came here and the literary artists that came here. But really, about the, about the end of the 40s, early 50s, when Historic Oslo Theater was produced and then put mm -hmm. Sarasota on the map from a performing arts point of view. Even mm -hmm. though it came through the Ringling Museum, mm -hmm. uh, it became one of the home of the Sarasota Opera at that time. But then just a short 10 years later, the Van Wazel Performing Arts Hall came here. Mm -hmm. And it was a whole different perspective mm -hmm. for our community. The great thing that it brought was traveling shows, Broadway shows, star power of great performers. You know, we, we love our theater here. We love our opera. Mm -hmm. We love our ballet. We love the fact that we have creatively produced arts here. But what the Van Wazel has added to that is the addition of great performances from the outside, things that people want to see. And to me, the greatest thing about that has been that so many of the people that love the traditional arts, whether mm -hmm. it's theater or opera or ballet, love that. But then there are lots and lots of people in the community who like that, mm -hmm. but they want to see Tony Bennett. They want to see mm -hmm. a star of some sort. They want to see a traveling Broadway musical. And the Van Wazel has brought that addition to the performing arts here. You know, they, they bring a different perspective, but most of all, what they brought was this iconic view on the bay, mm -hmm. this purple building 
that states out loud, we are a community that believes in the value of arts and culture. Mm -hmm. And it's become a symbol for the arts here. Now, you know, all of our organizations work together to form a great arts and cultural community. But the facts are that, you know, certain things jump out and, and sure. communities become known by what they do. Mm -hmm. And the Van Wezel is a very clear representation of what we believe at this point in our time and over the last 50 years as citizens of this community, we believe the arts are important, and the Van Wezels has helped us say that. Mm -hmm. Talk about the unique fact that the city owns the building, um, and, and it operates the venue right. different than other venues. Right, and, and I, it is somewhat unique that that happens. Now, I, I'm not expert enough to know on every single performing arts hall nationwide how it works, but what I can tell you is that the fact that the city owns the Performing Arts Hall mm -hmm. and it gets operated by a group of professionals who you know, really know how to run a hall makes it even more of a community asset. Mm -hmm. you know, the, the city and its citizens made the investment in this hall along with the philanthropists that helped this happen and uh, all of a sudden you've got a venue that is, is uh, operated by the community that right. it that it serves, mm -hmm. so the it's serving the community, and the community is serving the hall mm -hmm. with what we do. So I think it's been I think it's a great setup. Um, I know sometimes you know the the frustrations of being a part of a mm -hmm. government agency and how do you run a creative hall comes into play, uh, and there's certainly pluses and minuses. But it, mm -hmm. it's turned out I think to be a good setup for our community. And in particular, since uh, Mary and her team have been here, talking about great management. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. She has brought really top level management. I say she, meaning she and her staff. Mm -hmm. And uh, that makes such a big difference because the city is really not qualified to run a performing arts hall. You know, we've got to, we've got to work this mm -hmm. as a partnership. Mm -hmm. And I think they do a particularly good job at it. Well, and I think we, um, it, it, it's a testament to good public-private partnerships. Absolutely. Mary is not, she is from the government, but this is run, we have an amazingly good philanthropic community, and, and we're paying attention to the emerging philanthropic right. community with our, our, our things that are going on in the, in the town right now. Um, and so that, that, to me, is an example of a good public-private. Yes, a very good, a good example. Absolutely. So, the talk of the town now is the possibility of a new Performing Arts Hall. There's a lot to this. So how would you like to see this new Performing Arts Hall evolve? Evolve to, in terms of other Performing Arts organizations. What does that do? We are the centerpiece down there on the bay. How does that affect other, um, and should it? Well, the evolution of a new Performing Arts Hall will certainly, in my opinion, help strengthen the overall community. Mm -hmm. So much of the strength of the arts and cultural community in Sarasota is the fact mm -hmm. that we have a great performing arts hall. Mm -hmm. We have four or five great professional theaters. We have a professional ballet. We have a professional opera. And they're all synergistic. They're all near each other. Mm -hmm. So they're able to feed on each other. But what they do cumulatively is they help attract a, uh, a group of people here who could live anywhere in the world they want and they decide to come to Sarasota because it's a beautiful place mm -hmm. and it has really top quality arts and culture, mm -hmm. which includes the Van Wezel and all of our other great facilities. And to, again, by putting uh, a new hall, a, a new performing arts hall on the Bayfront, I'm always reminded of Sydney, Australia. <sighs> you know, if you say the word Sydney, Australia to almost anybody right, right. in the world, you think of the Opera House mm -hmm. sitting on that beautiful bay in sure. Sydney. Well, we have one of the most beautiful bays mm -hmm. in the world right here. Mm -hmm. We are a community of arts and culture, and I think this new Performing Arts Hall is going to go even further to help brand this area as the cultural coast of Florida, as well it should be, mm -hmm. and it's going to continue to attract people who are looking for a great place to live, but who want to make sure they have access to really high-quality arts and culture. You know, it's not an accident that we have two of the largest community foundations in the state of Florida yes. here. Yes. But what makes that possible is people come here who could live wherever they want, mm -hmm. people of means, they understand the importance of investing in their community and investing in the arts because mm -hmm. they know that has to happen. Statistically, only about 25% of their giving goes to the arts. The rest of it goes to children's services, mm -hmm. schools, 
religious products, mm -hmm. the things that make really great communities. Mm -hmm. And that's how I think the, the, uh, the combination of all of our arts organizations, the presence of a great performing arts hall, and then of the will of a community to be a cultural center and to make sure that that's a big piece of what our future is all about mm -hmm. is what makes this exciting new hall such a, a great potential asset for our community. Absolutely, and I think with the, um, the, the new hall being talked about, it's going to shine a light on all, all the other organizations. And this, that's the, the result of what's happening. Now that we're talking about a performing arts hall down the road, um, this has got to impact everybody's view of our entire arts and cultural community. Absolutely. Because the talk is going to be huge. This is our, one of our biggest land use legacies, that whole area there on the bay. Right. And when we talk about that, of it, it's going to shine a bright light, I think, on all performing arts. It absolutely will. And the other thing that it will do is it's going to give us the, pit, the potential to be able to serve more of our arts and cultural yeah. organizations. Mm -hmm. One of the handicaps that we have here uh, to continued growth in arts and culture is we only have so many X number of performing art venues. Mm -hmm. And we have, uh, I have well over a hundred arts and cultural organizations who are members of the Arts and Cultural Alliance. Mm -hmm. Well, we only have eight or nine stages or you know spaces to perform. So right. I think the expansion of a new hall, the ability to use that to continue to develop mm -hmm. emerging arts mm -hmm. and cultural organizations will have a big impact on all of our arts and cultural community. And I think this um, um, shines a light again on that we need to uh, evolve whether you're dealing with infrastructure here, which obviously that's a big part of it, that we are evolving as a community because we need we need more venues and we yes. need this this kind of thing. And I think that's what it's done. It's it's become, and that's why I call it the talk of the town. Yes. Because it involves so many other uh, other organizations. Right. right. And what their needs are, what their status is, what what why people are coming here. Because True. you're right, and the economic impact. Yeah. Well, and the other thing is, is that when you combine this a new performing arts hall with a beautiful uh, city public park yeah. area that is much more accessible to the general public, that's mm -hmm. much more uh, open to people being able to get involved with the waterfront, with sure. the cultural assets, sure. it's just a smart move for all of us. I, I, I hope that we continue mm -hmm. with the same zest and zeal mm -hmm. that we have to date because mm -hmm. it will be a huge, important part of our future. Absolutely. I mean, I think about what if John Ringling hadn't had the foresight 100 years ago to have that art collection, to gift mm -hmm. it to the state. You know, even though there's a lot of ups and downs in it, that anchor was a big part of what pulled everything forward. Mm -hmm. And then as we move forward, the evolution of the Van Wezel, of the other great facilities that we have, mm -hmm. uh, the equity theater stages that are in the area, uh, has really helped continue that legacy of being a great arts and cultural community. I think Jim said it perfectly. As we wrap up our tribute to 50 years of performing arts and look ahead to the next 50, we would do well to learn from the lessons of the past, vision, generosity, leadership, and perhaps most importantly, public-private collaboration led to the creation of the Van Wezel. There were challenges in discord back then, as there are now, and that's to be expected. But historic opportunities like Selby Gardens, Sarasota Orchestra, and the Bay Park Conservancy do not happen when special interests, fear of change, and weak political leadership prevail. I can't help but wonder what the Van Wezels, David Cohen, and Ken Thompson would say if they were here today. If you want to learn more about the Van Wezel, you can go to their website, vanwezel.org. And you can see this show and all of our previous episodes on our website, suzanneatwell.org, as well as my Facebook and YouTube page. That wraps up another one. I hope you learned something and enjoyed the show. We appreciate you watching us. And until next time, I'm Suzanne Atwell, and I'll see you around town.